thank you for joining Discovering the SDGs, convened by the Conscious Fashion Campaign in collaboration with the United Nations Office for Partnerships. I'm Tracy Myers, a senior business reporter at Women's Wear Daily. For today's session, Fashion Meets Applied Sustainability and Digitization, I'm joined by Detlef Braun, the CEO of Mesa Frankfurt, Kerry Banigan, founder of the fascist, Conscious Fashion Campaign, Timo Schwenzfeier, show director of Neonit and director of marketing and communications, and Robert van der Kirkhoff, the chief commercial officer at Lensing. At the convergence of scientific and digital innovations, this conversation will explore the role of fashion and textile industries play in advancing meaningful and creative solutions within an increasingly digital world. Additionally, this panel will seek to discuss how the industries can work towards more immediate sustainability while also not compromising on long-term goals. Before we begin with the questions, uh, I would like to ask each of my panelists to give a brief introduction to their work. Um, Carrie, if you wouldn't mind starting. Hi, thank you all. Hello, I'm Kerry Bannigan. I'm the founder of the Conscious Fashion Campaign. The Conscious Fashion Campaign is an awareness-driven initiative in collaboration with the United Nations Office for Partnerships. And we engage leading global fashion industry events to accelerate collective action in support of the Sustainable Development Goals. Through advocacy and education, such as co-convening this Discover the SDGs experience, the Conscious Fashion Campaign and Network actively supports the decade of action to deliver the sustainable development goals. Our partners collectively represent over $4.7 billion in revenue, 800 events in 40 countries, 136,000 exhibiting businesses, 11.9 million industry attendees, and over 14,000 employees. And today I really look forward to having this discussion with these panelists. Uh, Detlef, you would go next. Great pleasure to be here on this occasion. My name is Detlef Braun. I'm born and raised in Germany, close to Frankfurt. I have the pleasure to run Messe Frankfurt uh, since over 15 years now. Messe Frankfurt is one of the leading exhibition companies around the world in my professional business career. I had as well the pleasure to be the managing director of one of the leading German fashion company, which is called Jupe. So I made some experience as well before Mr. Frankfurt in the fashion business. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, Timo? Yes, hello everyone. I'm glad to be part of this panel. Uh, my name is Timo. I'm a director of marketing communication at Messe Frankfurt, overseeing all the textile related trade shows um, within the so-called expertise network um, since more than seven years now. And since more than two and a half years, I'm the show director of Neonit, uh, one of the world leading fashion hubs when it comes to the topic of sustainability. Um, this contains of like a trade show, a conference, a runway show, some showcases and so on and so on. And um, yeah, I'm really happy to have the chance to also introduce to some of you this uh, great business platform when it comes to sustainability. Wonderful, and Robert? Yeah, Robert van Kerkhoff, uh, as you mentioned, Chief Commercial Officer of Lensing. Um, the key activities of Lensing are, of course, to produce wood-based cellulosic fibers, but we really have the ambition to go beyond just producing a fiber. Uh, we believe that we can really contribute much more by greening up the value chain of the overall textile industry, still one of the most polluting industries in the world through strategic partnerships uh, with other co-producers, with NGOs, with governments, and of course with NGO. And we also have the clear ambition to integrate the consumer fully in raising the awareness about sustainability with a dedicated brand strategy with brands like Tencel or EcoVero. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for that. So I think uh, Carrie will get started with the, the questions for our panelists. Um, beginning with uh, Detlef, uh, Meza Frankfurt has been actively promoting sustainability and the SDGs for a very long time. Um, can you give us a brief introduction to your SDG actions? Absolutely. Thank you. It has nearly been one year now, Kerry. I still remember in December last year I was in New York. At the moment it's a little bit difficult to travel because of the circumstances we are currently facing. And we are very excited to officially announce our collaboration together with you, Carrie, on the Conscious Fashion Campaign 
as well as the United Office for Partnership uh, at the UN headquarter in New York. And Messer Frankfurt um, has really a very long track record when it comes to sustainability. Let me just give you a very brief introduction on the company I have the pleasure to work for. Messer Frankfurt, as I mentioned already before, is the leading exhibition company in the world with own fair ground. We organizing roughly 500 exhibitions uh, in normal times, not when COVID-19 is active like this. And we have a portfolio of about 100,000 company, so-called exhibitors who showcasing their products on our exhibition and roughly 5.2 million professional buyers who we are able and have the pleasure to host with. The company Messer Frankfurt is a global player. We are in 188 countries around the globe present with our organization. Due to COVID-19, our business, and let me say it this way, is really on fire. On fire means that since March this year, we have been totally disrupted. This means we are not able to do any shows on a personal base. Yes, we do shows on a digital base. In 186 countries, we cannot act personally. In two countries already, we're doing again personal analog shows, which is China and Japan at the moment. We are talking about textiles today, and this is one of the reasons why we started this collaboration. Textile is on the one side our profession, but on the other side our passion as well. In Messe Frankfurt, in our portfolio, actually we're offering about 60 textile events. So Messe Frankfurt is by far the worldwide market leader in organizing textile shows. And we're doing these shows all across the world in this textile portfolio, which we call Textpertise Network, we have about 23,000 exhibitors and 600,000 professional visitors. Messer Frankfurt is very closely linked to the topic of sustainability. Messer Frankfurt has been the first German trade fair organizer who was becoming 10 years down the road a member of the UN Global Compact. And at the same time, when we entered this, we realized that it's really necessary that we establish a platform for sustainability in our fashion and textile activities. And since then, the sustainability is really the key topic in all our textile shows we're going to do. Timo Schwenzfeier already mentioned this. One example is Neonet. He will talk later about this, basically. We have developed this platform, this hub for fashion, sustainability, and innovation nine years down the road, thanks to Timo and his team, Nowadays, in the year 2020, this is the leading European platform. Mercer Frankfurt um, has, and the sustainable development goals has a very great importance on what we're doing. We wanted to bring our commitment to sustainability to the next level now, committing to the sustainable development goals and promoting them even more actively. This is why in January 2019, we teamed up with you, Carrie, as I already mentioned, the Conscious Fashion Campaign and started mm -hmm. to first dedicated sustainable development action. And in September last year, we officially announced this cooperation in New York at the United Headquarter. And since then, we have a multitude of uh, sustainable development uh, goals action. Let me give you one or two or three examples. We have had panel talks and press conferences featuring United Nations representatives in countries like Germany, Russia, USA, and India. We have set up the Sustainable uh, Development Gold Walls and Sustainable Development Information Launches for trade visitors. We have organized showcases in Africa, for example, with the UN Fashion Alliance in Nairobi. Our Indian colleagues basically have organized Indian uh, hackathon on sustainability, and we have started various influencer campaigns in social media. The estimated reach and value of this has been that we showed and demonstrated the SDGs to about 146,000 trade visitors, 4,500 exhibitors, and about 2.7 million followers, basically. This is just an example on our action around the SDGs. Thank you so much for that. 
Um, and it's amazing that you've been able to um, pivot a business that's, you know, obviously so focused on in, in person interactions into something much bigger than that um, and very sustainable. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, so this question um, is sort of uh, for all of the panelists. Um, you know, what roles do sustainability and digitization play as the fashion industry revises future priorities, especially now as we've been in this um, kind of uh, transition period over the last year of trying to become more digital and um, we're all trying to learn and grow together. I think, um, Timo, we can start with you. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, so yeah, I would say that um, sustainability and digitization, they like go hand in hand because they're both key topics and are very crucial for the future success of, of fashion companies. Um, I always say by myself that when a company has not been, has not started to work on sustainability now, maybe they will vanish within the next uh, five or 10 years. So it's really like a very, very, very important point uh, to mm -hmm. make sure that you are on track um, latest now, um, latest with the, with the beginning of um, this, this uh, uh, movement uh, last year and this year, I would say. Uh, more and more consumers are demanding sustainable fashion, for example, because they are more aware of the environmental and also the social aspects. We can see the rise here with a lot of um, surveys. I mean, of course, at the end, it's still a, a question of the wallet. <laughs> it's still the question uh, <laughs> of the price, etc. But right. if you ask the consumers, um, the demand is getting higher and higher. And I, I always compare it with the situation of organic food, for example. It, it, took, mm -hmm. so, it took a while to really have see, to, to be able to see the success of organic food, but now it, it, it won't vanish anymore. Uh, it's not a trend anymore. It's really like it's 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 basic, mm -hmm. and I think sustainable fashion will be the same. And there are even more chances. And it's not only about the fashion. I mean, we're also talking about the textile industry. And just to mention one example, when it comes to interior textiles, uh, we are running um, the world largest trade show on interior textiles called Heim Textile, normally happening in January in Frankfurt every year. Um, next year, uh, hopefully in May, in a, with a physical presence. And um, we have more than three thousand exhibitors at Heim Textile seal in Frankfurt every year and uh, this year in January 250 of them were already absolutely dedicated to sustainable textiles and they were mentioned within our green directory so they really wanted to show what they are doing in in this in this in this field in this field of action and this just shows um, that it becomes a crucial part of, of what we are doing. When it comes to digitization, on the other hand, what we also can oversee that um, we have one show, it's called Text Process, it's about the production of, of textile and garments and, and fashion and so on, um, that the so-called um, trend of industry 4.0 is moving into the impact 4.0. So it's not only about how digitization can help us, it's also about like, let's show how it can help us to make the, the, the to make um, sure that we really can see the impact on the fashion and textile production of the future. And if, even if I say of the future, it's happening right now already. It's just a question of um, how many people, how many companies are involved in that kind uh, and that kind of, of, of production. And um, yeah, there are also some some trends like the 3D body scanners, for example, um, 3D simulation software. And we can also see that when it comes to the fashion designers of today. Um, of course, they need to know how to cut and to knit and whatsoever, but they also have to work with the laptops, with the computers to make sure that they are aware of these um, software solutions. So this is also a new mindset, a new skill um, for, the, for the young talents and the young professionals of the future. Oh, absolutely, Timo. We see that at, um, at Women's Wear Daily. We have a number of, of brands and designers that we've interviewed over the past year that have begun using those solutions and all of that that movement toward you know, digitization has really accelerated because of the, the current conditions. Um, and based on what I've heard, everyone that I've spoken to has seemed to really enjoy this process and find it to be much easier and more sustainable. So it's a win-win. Um, so Carrie, would you like to would you like to add? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, already to echo a lot of what Timo was saying there, I think the first step being that the convergence of sustainability and digitization is essential. The technologies exist and what we now need to look at is if digitization was shaped too good 
the fundamental impact it could have on sustainability would be phenomenal. And, you know, you mentioned about how the fashion industry is revising and we're looking at the future. The fashion industry, as even Detlef said at the beginning here, is adapting for a new era. And now we need to look at this and ask, what is the full potential of the technologies that are available and how are they going to help the fashion sector and others address the world's most pressing challenges? Because, you know, even already Timo mentioned from the body scanning to how you look at enhanced e-commerce, when you also step back from that, the fashion industry can also use this to address health issues, education, climate, Something that I'm seeing coming up a lot now also is digital finance and how this technology can become so inclusive and provide sustainable solutions. And when you also look at the numbers that Detlef shared and myself earlier, when you just look at the global reach of the fashion industry, it's so uniquely positioned to really use digitization to increase collaboration that actually achieves sustainability. And I think we've got to keep looking at what is available, how do we use it? And I also find it interesting, the fashion industry has always been driven by trends, what's next and be ahead of the game. And yet when it comes to technology pre-COVID, we were a little archaic than what we were willing to hold on to because everything worked. Everything was good. We met up, we would travel. Now that the pandemic has put a pause on this, it's somewhat forcing us to embrace this technology because we are in such an unparalleled disruption to operations and supply chains. So I really think as the fashion sector revises and adapts the priorities, we now use, need to ensure that this disruption can somewhat serve as a catalyst and make sure that we build a sustainable era for all stakeholders involved. Thank you, Carrie. Yes, and I, I, I do think it's very interesting how many brands were really pri prioritizing sustainability in other ways, but not in terms of sustainable solutions to really accelerate design and production in a way that was you know, faster, more streamlined, and could deliver product faster. Um, for a lot of different companies, this is sort of the last step to kind of round out the sustainability, uh, um, I, all, all of their sustainability initiatives together to kind of bring them to the next level where they're really streamlined and, you know, more in the future. So that's great. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Robert, did you have anything to add? Yeah, I think, let me build on a few points that were raised earlier. I think, number one, uh, you mentioned um, the I think uh, building on Timo's point, the consumer, the consumer at this moment is definitely more demanding. I think the COVID crisis actually increased the awareness about the importance of health and of our own environment. We've seen that through our social media tracking that we're doing that if you look at uh, the, the social media searches on sustainable fashion has continued to increase during the whole COVID crisis. So. But the consumer is still is very confused. Um, you mentioned about all the good things the brands and retailers are doing, but I think we're really at the beginning. And what I'm extremely worried about is the amount of greenwashing still that is going on. You see a lot of claims that cannot be founded. You see a lot of um, partial correct claims, but they are taken out of context. Uh, if you just only look at that one element, it's the right thing to do. But if you look at the complexity of the overall fashion value chain, um, it might really be misleading. And I think this is why the fact of transparency is so important. So if you're talking about digitalization and transparency, uh, for instance, you know, right now, and I think, Gary, you mentioned that technology exists, exists right now. So you're working with a startup as Lensing Textile Genesis. It's, it's really now also going into wool and, and, and other uh, fibers to really drive the transparency. Where does the fiber come from? How does the whole world map look like from fiber production to which countries, which companies, which labor kind of laws have been involved, which certification uh, is required at individual steps. And that is such a complexity that can only be done through digitalization, but it's also a confidentiality aspect because not every brand and retailer wants to disclose their value chain. And therefore the blockchain technology is really ideal to drive these kind of technologies. And that is also why I, I really appreciate all the initiatives that Mr. Frankfurt is doing because that left mentioned the whole complexity of the value chain in textile is really unique. Uh, you know, we are selling to spinners, but at the same time we are selling in fact indirectly to the brands and retailers because these are the people that decide what kind of collections come on the shelf and how do they communicate with the consumers. 
And very often a garment might hit eight different companies from uh, countries from fiber to garment. Uh, you know, I think when the consumer actually buys it, but also the complexity of a garment with the dyes, the finishes, the different fibers that are being used, the buttons, the swings, uh, that kind of complexity is really uh, making the recycling and the waste such a big issue. And I think this is where Messe Frankfurt is really positioned extremely well because they address really everybody in the textile value chain. So these are just two examples where I believe also through value chain digitalization and uh, with the consumer like blockchain, uh, you know, the time is right now to change, both because we've got a big problem, but also as Kerry mentioned, the technology is there today. So in fact, as an industry, we don't have an excuse anymore. I agree. Thank you so much. Um, so transparency and these emerging technologies raises a lot of questions about industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Uh, Carrie, would you mind um, explaining sustainable development goal number nine and just kind of uh, giving our audience a, a greater understanding of what that means and why it's so important to the industry? Yeah, absolutely. And I'll keep it brief because it gets so in depth and there's the targets and so forth. But overall, as you mentioned, you know, it speaks to industry innovation infrastructure and sustainable goal number nine is a call to action to build resilient infrastructure promote sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. And whilst we're sitting here having this conversation as fashion and textiles, this is open to all sectors. And what it is going to take for industries to achieve the innovation is to actually cross sector collaborate, which I'm sure we'll touch on later on, but also sustainable development goal number nine looks to how innovation and technological progress are key to truly finding lasting solutions solutions to both economical and environmental challenges. And as we've seen already just through the beginning of this conversation, we referenced the pandemic and what the disruptions this has brought, but it has also revealed the urgent need for resilient infrastructure. It's going to be the inclusive and sustainable industrialization together with the innovation that can unleash and actually help us build dynamic and competitive economic forces that then when we look to the other side where Robert has touched on value chains and so forth, we need to look at innovation for how we can create employment and lasting income for everybody involved, right? And so SDG 9 really calls for us to look at the role in introducing and promoting two new technologies, facilitating international trade, and more so enabling the efficient use of resources. And I will say that SDG 9, as it stands alone asking for innovation, all of the SDGs, these 17 goals are very interconnected. And so if you do start to explore and look at number nine, make sure you look at the knock-on effect of why, what it might do to others, Robert mentioned about the greenwashing, and I say with the SDGs, I call it rainbow washing. People might look at one and say, yes, this is what I'm doing, this is what's happening, but we have to ensure and be careful that just while you're championing one and you're looking to innovation, make sure it's also being responsible for the other goals as well. Yes, definitely. I think often brands uh, can cherry pick without realizing it. Um, but I think that, that that's improved, honestly. I think that that's become, I think that brands are, are doing exactly what you're saying and putting in the research and time to expand a bit further. Um, so I'd like to circle back a little bit more to um, some of the changes that have happened digitally during the pandemic. So Timo, uh, with the presence of COVID-19 having disrupted many traditional business operations, um, as we've been discussing, leaders have been forced to virtually pivot. Um, can you tell us about some of the effects of COVID-19 on your business? Um, yeah, I, I think we have to distinguish here a little bit between the effects on the trade show sector and the effects on the on the textile and fashion sector. So if I would start with the, with the trade show sector, and as, as Detlef already mentioned, we have postponed the restart of physical events until now spring 2021 due to massive um, international travel restrictions and now even more stricter regulations by, for example, our German government here. 
Um, we have already turned some of our shows into like virtual editions um, during the last month. Like Neonit should have happened in uh, July this year during Berlin Fashion Week. Um, we couldn't do that. So we created something called Neonit on Air to make sure that the community still can meet in this digital environment. And um, but what, what I really must stress, and I, I'm I was I was a big supporter of digital events or at least hybrid events and i still think that hybrid events will be the future but a digital exchange will never be able to really replace the physical meeting um, especially in the field of textiles and fashion but we need haptics we need trends we need inspirations and this physical meeting at least and if it's like just um hugging each other after six months of not seeing each other um is something which cannot be done in a digital way ever um, so i really hope that we can go back at least in this like hybrid situation of making sure that as, as much people as possible can meet each other uh, physically and the other can just um, attend in a digital way um, so but when it comes now to the, the textile and fashion sector um, and robert already mentioned it that COVID 19 has made um, visible how vulnerable the whole fashion sector is and that the industry needs a change and that the consumers are demanding um, the sustainability aspects even more than before because it's all linked um, the COVID 19 situation has shown how much um, our let's say environment will have an impact on our personal lives. So the people are really aware um, of what they should do, at least a, a, a big list of people, what they should do in the future to, um, to support a more um, sustainable lifestyle. And uh, when, I, when, when I oversee my context, for example, the fashion retailers, um, they had to close their shops and collections could not be produced because uh, material deliveries from abroad stopped and textile workers in producing countries lost their jobs without any social securities like in Bangladesh for example or in Vietnam um, at the same time um, with the lockdown all over the world the, the, the consumer demand for clothing in general has been reduced drastically maybe besides some jogger pants but that's the only thing or of course mm -hmm. the masks business but but that's it um, so um, and what, what I what I have seen as well is that according to a survey of McKinsey from April this year more than 50 percent of German consumers um, are spending already less on, on, on fashion and 80% of European fashion companies are facing still and already tremendous um, difficulties. So um, the brand reputation linked with the regards to sustainability has become one of the key factors um, in purchase decisions. And so I must say in a way, the COVID-19 crisis um, has made consumers more away and more aware of sustainability topics. And this is what we get as a feedback from our sustainable fashion labels and the sustainable um, fashion community. So I, I don't want to say that there is COVID-19 has anything like positive, but this is a change or like at least a catalyst where we can see that um, it's even more sustainability driven than um, ever before. Wonderful, thank you so much, Timo. And Robert, um, what are some examples where you have seen digitalization play a key role in promoting sustainability and that can be either within or outside your organizations i think the let me give you two examples uh, number one um you know also building on, on on what timo said everything becomes much more digital and there's still this educational aspect that i mentioned earlier that is really critical but then uh, there is this really need for strategic partnership to drive this systemic change that we need to see in the textile industry and what the digitalization allowed us, like for instance now uh, this this current forum, you know, it really brings these partners together, let them exchange thought, and then communicate it with a much broader audience than we might have been able to do in the past. So, uh, you know, I'm very happy, for instance, we as Lensing continue also to drive these kind of partnerships. We will be a sponsor of the SEG Discovery uh, platform. But if you dare look at also what we're trying to do, we're bringing partners together like the United Nations with all birds. Uh, you know, we, we, we introduced at the Tech Tech Steer for the first time a whole botanic shoe concept and uh, this innovation got a lot of attention at that time, but it was all words that really picked this up and drove it to a very big success. But then also with other partners like the PVH group that really then look at these kind of innovations and say, hey, what can we learn and what can we do in our group? And that's this kind of partnership that you really need because those leaders, they want to improve on sustainability and they want to actually drive uh, and learn from each other. And I think that is really critical. 
But at the same time, we've seen a significant trend towards online. Uh, yes, as Timo mentioned, there's been a significant drop in the in-store traffic. Uh, we are monitoring that very, very close uh, at this moment. But I was talking to several CEOs of brands and retailers. And what they said is that if you look at the ambition level that they had for their online sales, they are four to five years ahead. So they have hit targets in 2020 that they had expected to achieve with their online stores only by 24, 25. Now that is a trend that will stay, but it has a tremendous consequence also for how do you do your logistics as a company? How do we as, as ambitious ingredient brandings, how do we our branding uh, technology? Because you, know, you could have a hang tag on a garment, but in a digital store, that doesn't make any sense. So in a very short time period, we really had to change our whole brand strategy, our communication strategy, but also how do we interact with the value chain to make sure that we still get our Tensile brand and EcoVero brand not on the garments, but at least in the stores. And here you see innovations, for instance, if you go to the Tensile.com website, there is now suddenly a where to buy section. So we can link from our Tensile website immediately to more than 200 brands uh, where then the consumers can find collections with our fibers in it. But these kind of innovative models had to be really developed in a very short time period, but really have resulted in positive business results. And I think that is a trend that is there to stay. Wonderful, thank you. And Timo, did you have anything you wanted to add to that as far as you know, examples of digital solutions in the fashion industry? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, I really need to congratulate uh, Robert to what Lensing is doing. I really love the way um, you guys are tra transforming Lensing into, or like Tencel into like an ingredient brand. And um, it's really great because I can use it even on a private level to share it with my with my uh, circles, with my people. And if they are using the Tencel website, they can easily get in contact with brands which are using it. So I don't have to explain it by myself anymore <laughs> that much as it was like two or three years ago, you know? Um, so yeah, online retail is for sure one of the big winners. Uh, everyone knows, everyone can see that. Again, uh, just um, mentioning the McKinsey study, um, they say that um, about 20%, and I, don't, I think it's even more, um, of the consumers expect to buy less in physical stores this year and also within the, 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 the next years. Uh, and this is especially very true for the millennial and the generation set consumers. However, we all know that uh, the numbers um, of returns is, is, is rising. So this is also like a, 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 um, a one of the topics we need to face, like what kind of um, logistic logistic solutions we will have in the future. So um, digital options also here can help to reduce uh, returns in online sales, for example. Um, again, what I have to mention is that due to COVID-19, many fashion events, not only us, but also other big shows um, have been canceled or postponed or going digitally. Um, so in January, for example, we will host again near it on air only digital not physically um, we just hoped like three weeks ago we may could do it in january um, but it's not going to happen so we'll meet and we will gather the um, community um, on our around our instagram channel for example we will have some talks um, about um, also the digital solutions and we will mention a lot of topics we're discussing here um, as well um, what i can um, say is that um, the uh, the fashion designers which are very aware of the situation and which are going this digitization way or the digital way, um, for example, by showing their collections via live streaming, they are quite successful. And again, of course, it's sometimes really um, kind of uh, challenging to follow um, all these digital events, but at the moment it's the only chance we have. So um, the people should get connected with that. Um, the fashion designers, the brands, etc., should get connected with that to make sure that um, this is um, going to happen at least as long as we have the actual situation. Um, so we we really can face that this is one of the um, of the future scenarios as well. And also when it comes to digital contacts uh, concepts, I, I I would like to mention the blockchain technology because this is something which can lead us in a more transparent and even when it comes to circularity in a more clear way of um, how future garment production um, could uh, could be worked on and I'm also happy that we will um, talk about this in a, in a panel talk during Neonet on Air in January and I'm pretty sure that blockchain is a technology will, which will follow us on uh, a lot of other events um, to be showcased or to be talked about in the future. Thank you so much, Timo. 
So, uh, Carrie, um, following on from Timo and Robert, the fashion industry uh, has incorporated digitalization like never before. Uh, how do you think we can leverage technology to support sustainability within the sector? There's several things there, right? And Robert and Timo have said great things and provided a great list. And what it shows is that we need to be embracing technology from manufacturing through to the design phase, even then when it comes to the selling and logistics. And I love something that Robert really emphasized was about the role of partnerships, because it's actually going to be more critical now than ever to actually recover from the pandemic. And you know, going through my lens is really about advancing the sustainable development goals. And as this pandemic continues, we are actually seeing unprecedented, whether it's alliances, innovations, and achievements. Timo listed there some really interesting things that people are up to. And I think now for the fashion industry, there's this whole new generation of products and services. And really it goes from, there's the many benefits here of how technology can make things more inclusive, more accessible, like all this knowledge share we're now seeing online. Whereas before, if you had to travel and didn't have the means or the time or any form of resources, you actually couldn't get to access this knowledge and learn and educate. Then when you can look at what technology can do, whether it's to cut waste, manage water waste um, and usage, provide metrics, um, the data for growth. And I think one that's really interesting too is how we need to start using technology now more than ever to connect for collaboration. I had mentioned in a comment earlier in this conversation about digital finance and, you know, the reality is it's very interesting to now see how companies, especially on the factory side, will look after their garment workers because COVID-19 definitely showed this fragile system that the fashion industry is working in. And really as well, the pandemic deepened the inequalities and those that have been hit the hardest were actually already the most vulnerable. And um, an initiative out of the UN Capital Development Fund is the Better Than Cash Alliance. And they already pre-COVID were trying to get companies to move from cash to digital payments. Um, but now the pandemic has accelerated this initiative to do that. And it's in order to reduce poverty and also drive inclusive growth. But what's really interesting with this is they're also educating women in countries such as Bangladesh on what to do with their money. And through these reports, they were showing that these female garment workers would take the cash pay and just take it home and give it to their families. Whereas also by going to digital payments, the power of technology is not already empowering the staff. It also gives them education around finance, how to invest it, how to spend it and what to do. And that in turn actually helps strengthen the economy that this is happening in. And so I think the list is endless on what technology can do. And I always say it's there. Of course, we still want amazing innovations to continue. It's incredible what you see entrepreneurs creating and coming out with. And it is that disruption that we need, right? That is what COVID recovery, COVID-19 recovery is going to be powered by is these creative entrepreneurs being courageous enough and inventive enough during this time to take technologies and make them solutions for all of us. Thank you, Carrie. Um, and you know, from, from Carrie and from the other panelists, we've heard that digitization and sustainability go obviously hand in hand. Uh, one thing um, is, the techn is technology in the industry. And another thing can just be use using the right platforms, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, that's exactly the point. I mean, um, what you're saying basically is, is when we are going to launch basically our, late, our newest product next year, as I mentioned already before, which will be um, the Frankfurt Fashion Week, I mean, uh, um, we will have to two, key, two, uh, two key topics. One of them will be sustainability, the other one will be digitalization, basically. And hopefully, I mean, it's very important on what platform we as a show organizer are going to present this, basically. Uh, I think people, as we heard already, they are hungry for personal encounters on this. On the other side, I mean, what we're going to develop, basically a hybrid version where you have access to both of these topics on an analog and digital way. So absolutely, the platform is very important. Thank you. 
Um, and back to you, Timo. Um, from the right platforms to partnerships, uh, how can we foster multilateral partnerships between technology and fashion companies? Yeah, at the end, it's really all about partnerships. I think we've learned that within the last years already, but um, also here, COVID-19 is, is, is like a, kind of a catalyst. Um, and I would say that uh, when I look into my community, brands from the fair fashion community are setting an example already there maintaining um, partnerships with overseas suppliers, for example. Um, they are guarantee sustainable production standards still and transparent supply chains. And this is, this is what I think uh, globalization is all about. Um, because even if you are a, a fair fashion brand, for example, in Germany, you can produce in a sustainable way in Bangladesh, but then you need to set up the standards and you need to make sure that you take care of what's actually happening in a country like that. And this is the perfect a combination of globalization and local uh, production side. Um, so that's why I really like to stress this word. And also, again, it will be one of the key words for um, Neonet on Air um, next year in, in January. And um, we also see a lot of partnerships between tech and fashion companies, for example. Um, when I look um, into um, some of our shows like Tech Tech Seal and Tech Process, it's all about smart textiles. It's about performance textiles. Um, it's about the technologies such as the virtual designing, the avatars, the supply chain management. Um, we talk about micro factories, for example, where all these little steps, these little do dots are going uh, hand in hand. And it's really great to see um, how, how we even can face kind of a startup scenery, um, even with like um, traditional companies, um, but they want to work in this very progressive in, 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 in modern way. And um, also here, um, last but not least, what I really need to mention is that when we talk about partnerships, the partnership we as Messe Frankfurt are facing with Lensing is also very, very outstanding because at the end, what Detlef just mentioned, we are creating a platform, right? We are creating a stage. But what we need um, is the right partnership with companies which are filling, which are using these stages with content so that people can show it, the people can see it, the people can get inspired of it, and the people can talk about. And at the end, when it comes to, to partnerships, when it comes to cooperation, maybe sometimes even co-opetition, um, we really um, want to make sure that um, these stages are used. And um, yeah, again, Lensing is one of the vital partners in that. I'm really happy um, that we can stress that out on a, on a very global and local level um, quite all the time. Thank you, Timon. But uh, Robert, um, I'd like to just discuss how, uh, you know, um, uh, Meza Frankfurt talked about partnerships in order to foster digitalization and sustainability. Um, so how do you jointly promote these topics? I think, you know, let me build on the two topics uh, and by just referring to what Detlef and to what Timo said. I think, um, you know, the huge network that, uh, that the Messe Frankfurt has built up all the way through the value chain gives us, you know, through Messe Frankfurt, the platforms that we need to reach all these people because we have this ambition to address everybody, um, you know, we can, we can do so. Now, we as Lensing try to reach out to the potential value chain partners. We developed, for instance, in the United States, our own conference, our own concept of, of innovation, uh, but we transfer that completely uh, then to Messe Frankfurt because they, they are much more professional in doing so. They are much more uh, in a position that they can reach out to more people to bring these people in. So we have now integrated this in New York um, in, in the Messe Frankfurt uh, show, which allows us to reach much more people. But of course, you know, it's also an opportunity for Messe Frankfurt to really get uh, priority access to some of our innovations. Timo mentioned, for instance, now the tech textile. I mentioned earlier uh, the botanic shoe concept. So we had an internal idea. We were not really familiar with the shoe industry. We were selling to spinners. Um, so we developed this botanic shoe concept. We just said, okay, now this is what we believe we can do. We showed it at the tech textile and we had great successes. We have now a very successful cooperation with Allbirds and other shoe brands are following. And the same kind of initiative we're doing, for instance, when you're talking about agro, we, we have now a whole kind of technical solution. This is not about consuming. It's not about textiles necessarily. It can also be non-wovens where we can use the tech textile platform to bring these kind of sustainability innovations. And, you know, and then I think the, the Heimtex for me is, is, is a great example because it's, it's a trade show 
which is so incredibly powerful. Um, you know, we we had a quite complex and saying complex technology called Refibra, where you're recycling cotton back into a completely virgin, uh, high quality fiber, reducing the amount of wood content. And we wanted to show that concept, but we needed to explain to the brands and the retailers and whole value chain, what is this technical innovation? Why is this better than the incumbent? And the Hymtex provided us really an opportunity to communicate that to the whole value chain. We had some young student designers that came up with all new collections in home textiles. And the kind of momentum that we got from just this one show is really allowing us to have a much more rapid commercial introduction of these new innovations globally. Uh, we could never do that alone. So these are just some of the highlights on the platforms that Messe Frankfurt is creating and some of the examples that Timo said, be it Tech Textile, be it Hymtex, uh, you know, where we can actually reach out and, and convey the message to a broad audience. Thank you so much. And I, I just wanted to circle back to Sustainable Development Goal 9 and how uh, and how important digitization is to achieving that. Carrie, can you maybe just elaborate? Yeah, and so the reality is digitization is going to be vital to attaining sustainable development overall. And, you know, when we look at throughout this whole conversation, all of these different things have been touched on. Technology can help minimize inequality, integrate renewable energy sources, digitize manufacturing processes, even help brands and retailers be able to connect to their customers. And also for the whole sector, it can provide access to online tools and information. And it's going to be the these tools that enable sustainable consumption and production to promote resource efficiency as well, which goes back to how the SDGs are so interconnected. And I would definitely say that digitization will not only help achieve SDG 9, I actually really believe it's the innovation that are going to drive progress for all of the SDGs. Thank you so much, Carrie. And so, you know, I'm curious to know, Robert, um, how that kind of innovation and those tools um, can affect the resilience of supply chains. Um, how do you prepare for the future and what role do digital solutions play for you? Extremely critical role. Um, you know, first of all, all our fibers are based on wood. Now, wood is a great raw material because it's completely renewable, but it's also um, very tricky raw material because we all hear about the deforestation issues. Um, so what is extremely important is that we are... Um, taking controlled wood from managed forest through FSC and PFC certification, which makes it very difficult. Now we see digital tools really helping us there. We can monitor now how the forest growing if they are well managed and then where we extract the sources from. So is this, is this happening? So this is purely with our brands and retailers. But then when you look at the whole value chain complexity that we have to go from spinners to fabric producers, dyeing and finishers, garments, et cetera, to the brands and retailers, um, you know, I, I've, I've built in the last few years up an allergy against waste, and I see uh, three solutions for the textile industry to, uh, to, to, to reduce the waste. Number one, I think, is we just need to buy less. I think that is just, just a fact, and that is just a change of attitude that we as consumers need to drive. We need to be much more conscious buying garments that can last longer. The second thing is that we need to reuse and i think this is in the united states you see this already a lot europe is just coming now with all the subscription models so that actually you don't own garments anymore but that they are being leased and if i look at some of the innovation some of the platforms that have been created in the us it's really amazing because if you then have a subscription on some of the textiles uh, that company of course becomes much smarter and the digitalization allows them to do some analysis and not only then they can supply you the right jeans or the right tops or the right shirts, but they also can then make recommendations based on your size, based on your previous collections. And this is where the individualization of consumers really will be a big role. So I think the reuse factor will really become more important of the, of the future. And the third aspect is really circularity. I think there's just no way that we can continue to generate as much waste in our value chain as waste through the production process um by buying garments that we never wear or garments that are being produced but never sold so i think this is where technologies where we're working on with supply chain companies like blue yonder um, to really help to drive efficiencies in the value chain but circularity becomes really key and you know there's for instance a really exciting startup right now in new york uh, that we are working with together with microsoft circular id that would help them ultimately 
to identify which garments are really suitable for proper recycling, because this is, I think, where there's still a huge amount of technical developments required. I think coming back to number nine, this is an innovation that the industry really needs to go for. The, the complexity that I mentioned earlier about fibers, about raw materials uh, like uh, dyes, finishes, etc., uh, make circular fashion still quite complex. But this will become, I think, a standard technology in the next four years, and digitalization is really essential there. Thank you so much. Um, that wraps up our discussion on fashion needs applied sustainability and digitization. I'd like to thank the panelists for their time and for your insights. It was a great conversation. And I would also like to thank everyone watching. Thank you. Thank, thank you all. Much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.